Hi, welcome, welcome. Happier now after the election? Yes. Oh gosh. I drove for an hour and a half to go and vote. Where's, where'd you vote? Because I was still in Bristol. I was still registered in Bristol. So you have to go there? Yeah. So we are Midrash Bracet Rubber. 10 7. Oops. First, you don't succeed. Try and try again. Um, and this I love very much. Do you need you need Hebrew? You need Hebrew. Thank you very much. Ten six. Let's sorry. Let's start with ten six. Um, uh, so kaf mem gimel. Does anybody want anything? I have English. I have Hebrew. <laughs> Yes, come in English. <laughs> I've got famous last words. <laughs> Today is actually not a bad day to have the English to hand because the, uh, there's a lot of Aramaic and it's quite it's quite tricky. Cuff mem, cuff mem, gimel. Um, does anybody have this from last week? This is the handout from no, last week. So yeah, Hi, Hi, Milton. Hi, welcome, welcome. I'm going to, I'm just going to start from the beginning of 10.6 because it's really interesting and... Thank you. Nice. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Nope. Yes. Oh, Sarah. Yes. Ooh, the Plyde, the yeah, yeah. Plyde's and Ryan, all that kind of good oh, stuff. Bars, okay. Um, we did the first part of this, but let me just let me just do it again, just because I think I'm not sure who was who was here last week. I just think it's just a really interesting piece. Bar Sira Amar. So this is actually a quote from the book of Ben Sira, um, which is not a usual thing. Uh, what is Ben Sira? It is a Jewish. Lit- it was a, it was a Jewish holy text of its time, which did not make it into the Hebrew Bible. So we know that there are these sort of 24 books of the Hebrew Bible. Um, we're still in last week's time. Um, and there, there, there is actually an argument about what those 24 were. It wasn't clear that that, that was all set. What else are you up to? Um, Hebrew translation. Translation, yeah, sorry. No. Uh, hang on, what's when that? When was it set? The, uh, <coughs> when, when, was, when was it finally canonised, as it were? Right, so we are, we are absolutely meeting... So it... Um, Um, in the Mishnah, mm. in Mishnah Yadayim, mm. uh, with a bunch of people like Rabbi Akiva talking about it, there is an argument about which book makes it into the, the mm-hmm. canon of Tanakh. Um, and, and there is a question raised about Shira Shirim, and Rabbi Akiva says, you know, Shira Shirim is worth the entire Torah, you can't kick Shira Shirim out. And then there's a question about Kohelet, and um, Kohelet makes it in end of Mishnah. But what, what seems, what you can probably deduce from that is that there was another one that didn't make it in. Mm-hmm. And the one that looks like it didn't make it in is Ben Sira, also called Ecclesiasticus. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it comes from, you know, late, but just about within the period that you could have made it in. I mean, what's so interesting about Ben Sira is that it's incredibly um, from. I mean, it's very, very pious. There's nothing that could possibly be seen as heretical. It's a, you know, it's a very um, uh, seriously religiously committed work. Didn't make it in. What makes it in? Kohelet, which is outrageously um, uh, heretical in one way, and Shira Shirim, which is outrageously heretical in another. So it's kind of interesting to see. Um, but here we have a quote from Ben Sira in the Midrash which goes to suggest that at this time, at the time of the kind of um, Amoraic period, so three, four, maybe even 500 AD, it is known as a sacred text, but it got lost. And because it wasn't canonised, literally, what is a canon? A canon is a tube that you put something in to look after it. Because it wasn't looked after, it got lost. So we lost the original Hebrew of Ben Sirah, 
Um, we have scraps of it which are retained in Midrashim like this. There are probably five or six examples in rabbinics of Ben Sirah being, um, uh, being cited and cited almost as a biblical verse, which is kind of interesting. Um, but not the whole thing. The whole thing was preserved by the uh, Roman Catholics, well, the Greeks, uh, by, you know, pre, uh, the, by the church, who, who, who canonized it as an intertestamental work, right? So Old Testament, New Testament, intertestamental work with things like Maccabees and Judith and um, Tobit and Jubilees and, um, you know, the, some of those kinds of, some of like Enoch, the book of Enoch, and some of those kinds of works. You may also hear the word, um, epigrapher or even pseudo epigrapher uh, used to refer to what the Catholics, what the Christians religiously refer to as intertestamental and other works of that kind of period. Um, was the Hebrew the same Hebrew as, as used in all the, in the, in the other, or, or, or are all the, uh, the books that made up the Torah, that made, made up the, uh, what, for us, the Torah is the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew. Tanakh, the the Hebrew Bible. The, sorry, the the full the full Hebrew Bible, or the, the when you say Torah, do you mean Chumash or do you mean Tanakh? No, I mean the Tanakh, right? Which, which is this part? Yeah, Torah Devim and Ketuvim. Yeah, yes, so, so yeah. the whole thing. No, um, and you can see all kinds of evolution of the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember reading something about Hallel. Um, uh, um, the scholars believe that we can date Hallel to. Um, first temple period because of some of the Hebrew that is used in some of the verse um, called Tagmulohi Alai like it just doesn't feel like that is an as old a bit of Hebrew <coughs> as the Exodus narrative so, you know, so it, it's, it's later um, and then the key thing that tends to happen is a lot of Aramaic creeps in late so the book of Daniel which is usually referred to as the least ancient book to make it into the canon, there's a lot of Aramaic in Daniel I mean, I mean the, script, language, the script is the same, isn't it? The, 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 the script, all of bets and gimmels, yeah. correct. Yeah. But, yeah. But, 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 but the original script was not this, right? So, um, I mean, you know, this is, this is not... Um, uh, the, the, this is a later script from some early... You know, some of the earliest things that we found in Hebrew look quite different. Um, some of us are quite different. There's a really interesting midrash... Um, that talks about the miracle of the uh, inscribing of the of the commandments, right? That Moses brought, and mm -hmm. um, where it said that the that God carved them with God's finger, and that the center of the letters floated, right? God carved all the way through the stone, and the center of the letter floated, which would be great if there were any memsophites or samachs in. The Ten Commandments, which there aren't. Right? <laughs> so, you know, clearly there were other letters that had a, uh, a, a circularity to them. So I mean, there's lots of stuff to be, um, um, you know, you can dig up very old, I think they call it like, like paleo -canon Canaanite or something, you know, like this sort of pre this alphabet. alphabet. I'm not an expert on that. Epigrapher as opposed to apocrypha. Sorry. <coughs> Uh, apocrypha. Sorry, you, yes, you apocrypha, you, you apocrypha, you and pseudo epigrapha. Sorry, and pseudo yeah, apocrypha, yeah, apocrypha and pseudo epigrapha. Sorry, yeah, no, no. I mean, I, you, you, I'm not. All of this kind of stuff is stuff that they just don't teach rabbis because it's not canonical, right? So therefore, right. it's useless. But right, so pseudo epigrapha means books that look like they have been written in someone's name, right? right? So you know, hi, I'm Enoch. Let me tell you what I did today. That is pseudo epigrapha. Because although it says, hi, I'm Enoch, we don't think that it is by Enoch. We think that it's an apocryphal, intertestamental, later work, <laughs> okay. not written by the guy who turns up Eponymous. in Genesis. Eponymous. Well, yeah. epigraphically, so. it's pseudo, <laughs> yes, pseudo epigraphical. Right. Um, okay. Yes, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I have absolutely no okay. grounds on which to stand to be kind of precise about that language because okay. I'm not myself. <laughs> So here's Ben Sira, and you've got the quote from Ben Sira, and I've given, and then those of you who've got last week's handout, I just dug up um, the quote from um, Ben Sira. It's Ben Sira chapter uh, 38. Um, and it's just a really interesting quote about 
the value and the the, 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 the the godliness of doing medicine, which in itself is really interesting, right? Ben Min God brings up a medication, right? Drugs. And what's the translation there? Drug it says drugs. Drugs. Uh, from the earth. But that you know Uvahem Harofe Marpe et Hamaka and with these the doctor heals the illness. Uvahem Harokeach Markeach et Hamarkacha. And with them, the chemist chemistizes the chemically induced condition. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a kind of, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's a big play for the thing that obviously <coughs> Jews kind of feel quite strongly, that um, it's good to heal people. As an etymology, he's got a, he wrote a fucking thing on what makes a good physician. I'm sure, I'm sure I saw it somewhere. Yeah, he wrote a lot of stuff about yeah. that. Including, excuse me, a prayer, which uh, a lot of doctors, including my own, have up on their wall. Um, but, uh, it, you, right, but, but, but there are religious ideas that say that if you get ill, it's because God wants you to suffer. But, you know, there is the Jewish idea is that God put the ability to heal into the world so people can use it. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with someone about um, some of these kind of in vitro fertilization issues in Haha. You know, Jews tend to be very, very um, keen to exploit medical science to give people the ability to have children if they can't, right? There's no sense. I mean, even though the Bible kind of, I mean, infertility in the Bible is always a godly decision, right? Um, you know, so and so can't have kids, so and so can't have kids, so and so can't until God decides to open their womb. Um, but actually, you know, uh, the, the Jews are right at the forefront of all kinds of, uh, of, uh, of, of things around those According kinds of According to... Something I read from uh, that lady who campaigned in Israel. A lot of the leading hospitals, several of the leading hospitals now in Israel, will only do be help if you've been married according to the orthodox, strictly orthodox rites. Anybody who's not married according to those rites will not be helped. <laughs> oh, that's appalling. That, that sounds like a law case. Yeah, um, you bet. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, right, we're at Rabbi Simon. Yeah, can everyone see where we are? Third line down, um, Mishnah, uh, Midrash six. Yeah, mm -hmm. who, who who would like to read? I'd get in early, Milton, because it's getting worse. <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is the easy stuff. I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll do the Aramaic, but yeah, you can. I, I you should can... have stayed on the Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there is nowhere to hide. <laughs> <clears throat> Rabbi Simon, ain't lecha. Call I say the Esov she ain't the Mazal she ain't look she ain't look a call Esav the Esav she ain't the Esav the Esav she ain't lo Mazal Berkia she bache she bache Oto go Omer lo Gadol okay so ain't lecha ain't ain't lecha call Esav the you don't have an Asev kol Asev Asev. This is a kind of a Hebrew idiom, you know. A, a, not a I would translate it as you know. There's not a single blade of grass would be slightly idiomatic, right? You know, there is. You don't have any grass or grass, right? Not a single blade of grass which doesn't have a mazal. Luck. Yeah, usually translated as luck, but literally, the mazalot are. The star, the heavenly formations, yeah. right? I mean, so it's a. I mean, you know, it, does Judaism believe in astrology? Question. <laughs> answer. At some point in time, some Jews have believed. You know, <laughs> does Judaism believe in dot 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 anything? But right, you know, but, but here we have a little entree into the idea that, that, that there are these sort of heavenly spheres that 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 right, are up in the rakia. The rakia is um, translated as the <laughs> firmament. I don't know what that means, but I can translate it correctly. That encourage it. Vaomarlo gadol gadol says to her, get big, get big. Or as we would sometimes say, grow. Right. The, 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 then everything that happens on the earth is within God's dominion. Right. And that you've got all these mazalot that are sitting there, going to each and every blade of grass. Go on, grow, grow. Go on. A bird tweet. You know. So, you know, this is going to be a midrash, or we're entering into a couple of midrashim about kind of everything happening within God's mm -hmm. dominion. 
um, and it, you know, possibly with a slight natural world um, piece. This next bit is complicated, sorry. Hadahu Diktiv Hayadata Hukot Shamayim the Imtasim Tishmaru the Eretz the Imtasim Tishtaru Mishtaru 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 Yeah the Eretz the Gomer the Shon Shomer Shon Shon Shotter Shotter Like the Mishtara Do you know the the Mishnah, the Mishnah. Please, yeah. Right. Um, uh, <coughs> so this is Job, back end of Job. What's happening back end of Job? Job, God is saying to Job, "Have you any idea what's going on?" Do you know the weirdness of the heavens or the unfathomableness? Right, chok as in. Um, you know, the, the, the inexplicable laws. Uh, inexplicable laws, right? Do you know the Chukot Shemayim? Im Tasim Mishtaroba Aretz. Can you police what's going on on the earth? Dot, 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 dot. Answer, no. Sorry, can I just remind myself of the remainder of the, uh, of the verse here? Um, can I establish the, the dominion thereof in the earth? Right? Can you know the workings of the heavens? Can you be in charge of what's going on in the earth? Absolutely not. Therefore, you know, this is the, the what's going on in Job. How, Job, do you think you can possibly have a sense of what's going on for me, God? Right? You don't know this kind of stuff. But when it says shoter, <clears throat> lashon shoter, what does that mean? It's then going to go back and do... The verse, two verses preceding. So can you see where we were? We were in Job 38, 31. And now we are Sham, Job, Sham 38. But Lamad Aleph, verse 31. Yeah, can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Are you, how, you, how you doing? Are you with us? Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. Can you, so that hey, by the way, this is a piece of grammar. When there is a hey before a word, it can sometimes mean, it's called the interrogative hey. The hey of question. Um, it's it's distinct from the Canadian interrogative. Hey, which <laughs> comes at the end. You know. <laughs> I'm very clever. Hey, <laughs> you, know, you know this is a nice day. Hey, um, is it? Um, but right, hut, hut, kasher, and then this is yeah. Uh, uh, Milton, can you take us to the rest? Hut kasher ma'adanut kima o mish mushkot. Uh, Pause. So just 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 catch this from the from the, uh, the the translation here. So this is verse thirty one. Can you cut kesha? Can you, right? Can, can you, you bind? Tie? Can you sign? Yeah. Or oh, bind? Sign. Um, Adunut kima. The cords to kima is the name of one of the stars, uh, one of the star systems. That is uh, an ancient Hebrew name for Pleiades. I know that because I looked it up. <laughs> it is because it says so, right? I mean, you know, so, so, so um, one of the things that God is saying to Job, I'm not actually sure if it is God quite yet in verse 38. Sorry, it might be that it's slightly it before. It seems that Job is quoted uh, a lot uh, rather than the other. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yes, completely. God. Because part of what, I mean, um, uh, we, are, we are getting an over... Um, you shouldn't think that Job is quoted this much all the way through Bereshit Rubber, but when you are dealing with the natural world and its formation, mm -hmm. and you are interested in the raw power of the natural world, there's yeah, I suppose you could go to Psalms. There's a couple of Psalms, but really Job is where it's at. Mm -hmm. So um, you're right. I mean, it's funny. My um, uh, I, I pull my little biblical quotes from a website, Machon Mamre, and it tells me into which books of the Bible I have clicked in order to go and get my. Um, you know, these, these little snips that I put on these sheets. And I am clearly in Job all the time. I've had absolutely no recourse to Jeremiah, no recourse to Leviticus, you know. I mean, it's, uh, it, yeah, <coughs> but you're right. It's, it's all Job. So can you tie up Pleiades <coughs> or undo reigns of, of Orion? Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to say, I don't, I mean, you know, I'm now starting to get into another area of things that I don't fully understand, which is what was the Hebrew conception of astrology? 
um, it's very clear that there was a conception of astrology that certain stars had certain kind of influences in certain kind of ways. But what's going on in Job is again the same, you know, it's the same kind of question. Hey, you puny little human, wondering why things are so bad for you. You have no idea. Can you sort out the can you sort out the stars? Can you sort out Orion? Can you sort out Pleiades? Can you release one, control control one, release the other? Didn't think so. Who are you, Schnip? Mm-hmm. To tell me, God, that I, you know, that, that this is unjust, this thing that has happened to you. Um, that's that's this the the answer from after the um, after the, uh, the, the the fireworks that you get in Job. And astrology was quite a uh, well-known part of Babylonian. Um, it's clearly going to astrology. I mean, one of my all-time favorite rushes, one of my all-time favorite rushes, is when God takes Abraham out and says, "Habitna Shmaima." Uh, it's this, look up at the stars if you can count them so many shall be your, your, your children right at the beginning of the Lech Lecha sort of journey and there's an amazing Rashi and it's in the Midrash we'll get there eventually please God that it says <laughs> look at the, translated as look at the stars and the, the Midrash points out that the word Hebit is not Ra'a right it doesn't mean it's not look or, or um, Sofer Right, so in scope out towards the stars, the habit means to look down, and it quotes a couple of verses where habit is someone standing on top of a mountain looking down into a valley. It says that God took Abraham above the stars, and says, "You are beyond all astrological um, imprisoning of you. You are, you will be freer of anything that people say that you will be." Right, so Abraham is struggling with not having children. And, 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 and it said that you know, he is fated to not have children, but God takes him above the stars so and says you will not be imprisoned by fate. In that kind of sense, you have freedom of choice. It's a really, really beautiful um, midrash. But, um, but there, there is definitely astrologically connected stuff kicking around. <clears throat> uh, Rabbi Hanina Bar Papa, the Rabbi Simon Amar, uh, kima. kima. So when when the biblical verse talks about Kima, which we've translated as uh, as Orion, no, sorry, as Pleiades. Kima is Pleiades. The Kima is Meadenet. Okay. So so it, it it edens, it paradises, right? It brings on the Peirot, right? The Pleiades in its right place at its right time is responsible for. Um, the, the the fruit kind of developing, I guess kind of like internally. I mean, my, I, I'm I'm really you know uh, there is a sense that the is somehow associated with the winter. Orion is the winter. Is there anyone here know anything about star signs? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So so Kima, I don't know to um, brings on the fruit and Seal, which is Orion. Moshe uh, ben Kesho lekesho. Uh, draws, I, yeah, it draws on between between the knot and the knots, so nobody's got the slightest clue what mean, what this means. I've been in and out all the various prophecies, uh, the, the various commentaries, and then the Olbeck and then there's the, uh, it's probably got something to do with sort of filling out, uh, sort of the the, the, the the way or the way that the bud comes out from the way that branches kind of uh, stick together. Um, <coughs> uh Hatotzi mezarot beito veish al baneha ayis vaish al baneha tenachem baneha tenachem tenachem. Right. So the interrogative: Hey, can you yot say? Can you take out the mezarot at their time? Mazarot is Mazalot. Can you take out the stars at their time? We're back in Job, right? Can you take out the stars back in their time? And the and this is and the and the ayis is the is the bear. It's the um, what's it called? Canis Major, the, the big bear. Um, you know, an example. Can to, again, you know, God saying to Job, "Can you move the stars around?" Um, the, the 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 bear and it's um on it uh, the, the big bear and the little bear right so that's the yaas al baneha the big bear and it's it's uh, son her son. Rabbi Tanhum Bar Chaya, Rabbi Shimon Amru Mazal Hu Shehu Mamzer Et Haperot. Yeah, so when it says the Mazarot, 
that is the star sign which mumses the fruit. It's the star sign which mumza. Mumza. Yeah. Luckily, I guess. Usually translated bastard, right? The sort of imperfect, right? Or right. messes up or destroys the fruit. So you've got some some star signs that bring on the fruit, some signs that that, that, that make the fruit go bad. I, I have to say, I, I, I really don't understand astrology. As far as I was aware, all the stars were all present in the sky at any one time, but there is apparently something about a star that's directly on top of you, depending on where you are and the time of the year. And they, the star signs wrote the stars on the show rotate around the earth rotates around the sun in such a way as to reveal different stars at different points of the year um how can they identify certain of these words kima or whatever with with the certain uh, stars yeah i mean if i would imagine the best place to go would be a Ezra. um I, and oh, people like radak who uh david mm-hmm. kimchi who is one of the major commentators on ketuvim who i suspect will have a long uh, a written explanation as to precisely which star that is. I mean, we can't identify, I suppose, completely perfectly, but but it, it, it um, unless I, I don't know. I mean, but it's a tradition, I presume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there there will probably be midrashic tradition, yeah. rabbi, rabbi, Parshanut tradition, commentary tradition. Mm. Um, there might also be star maps, ancient star maps, things that get dug up. I mean, the names of the. I mean, there's a there's a very famous. Um, um, star sign uh, mosaic in uh, the synagogue in Bet Alpha which dates to before this time so you know uh, mm-hmm. yeah I mean there's there, there are just different ways of doing that kind of it's called um, higher biblical criticism well you know it's, it's probably sort of philological work mm-hmm. well done there we go. it gets yeah. more difficult unfortunately in terms of language because it is all Aramaic from here on here we go. I haven't even. Uh, uh, yeah. um, we're not quite there yet. Uh, Rabbi Amri, the rabbi said, "I feel the barim shatem ro'eltam shehem yatera ba'olam kgon zvuvim ufirushin v'yitushin afhem bichlal briato shelo alam hen." The rabbi said, "Even dvarim, even things that atar ro'eltam, you look at them." That they are yatera, they were extra bola. They are unnecessary for the world. For example, fleas, gnats, and flies. <laughs> you could translate that: gnats, flies, and fleas, or flies, gnats, and fleas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, even things like this that you just don't think there is any point to these things in the, the world. And boy, haven't we all thought that? Afhem bechalal olam hem. Even men are in the category, and they're in the in the in the in the, in the club of the creation of the world. And um, another thing that I think is possibly going on with that use of that word bichlal, what, what, what does that word bichlal possibly remind you of? Does anybody remember what a lectionary verse is? Goodness, I seem to have kind of long forgotten it. Fayachulu Hashemayna, right? God clulled the world, right? God's clulling of the world. So when God usually translated, when God completed the creation of the world, we know, I mean, you know, this is an idea. Everything has to be created by that point. But, you know, even things that you think might not be needed, they are still in the klal of the creation of the world. And with all of them, God does God's shlichut. Um, God does God's shlichut. Uh, Bidding. Great. Yeah. Sort of agency, right? You know, they're all they're all on God's so, like, do, 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 do people not remember the the, the, the shlichim who would come from Israel? You know, and come for yeah. spend, you know they're, 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 they're the messengers, right? They, they, they you know even flies are on God's shlichut. Afilu al yaday nachash, even the afilu al yaday yitush, the the afilu al yaday tzvardeya. Ah, that's an easy one. Even I can do tzvardeya, right? You might not think you need frogs in the world, but what do you need frogs for? Survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Frogs are going to be very, very important. What? Um, oh, so they, uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Frog. <laughs> Rabbi Tanchuma Amar La B'Shem Rabbi Nachama. Rabbi Brachia B'Shem Rabbi Chelbo. Rabbi Ach. Uh, so a whole bunch of people said that Rabbi Acha. Have Mishtaya Hadain Uva. He would tell this, he would story this thing. 
or he would retell this thing, what happened. It's an uvda. It, it's definitely something that happened. Chad Barnash, have a aim al kif nara. There was a guy who was walking along on the shores of the river. Chama chad urdan, there was this frog. Tana chada akrav, it was carrying a scorpion. Umagiza yate nara, and it was crossing the river. Kevan de avadat shlichute, when it had eved, avadim hayinu, when it had eved, worked. Yep, when it had worked its shlichut, when it had worked its mission, when it's worked its mission, achzarte laatre, he took it back home again. <laughs> this frog carried a scorpion over to the other side of the river. Scorpion went off, frog just waited around, checked its nails. Scorpion comes back, scorpion gets get back on and the frog swims off back with the scorpion. What was the what was the scorpion's mission? What do you need a scorpion for? Sting something. Yep. Yep. Right? You know, God 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 needed this person's stung, so God got the scorpion to do it and said to the scorpion, I'm gonna put a frog there to carry you across the river and you'll right? And and then it and then it came back. So we're into the world of sort of mythic uh, folklore. I mean, you know, my, my mind went straight to a story that I thought was old, but apparently it only sort of began in 1954, right? The story of the, uh, the scorpion on the frog's back, and the scorpion says to the frog, will you take me across the river? And the frog says, you'll sting me, and the scorpion says, I promise I won't. And halfway across, it stings the frog, and the frog says, oh, you idiot, we're both going to die now. And the scorpion says, yeah, well, you know. I, I can't act against my nature, can I? Mm. Turns out that's a 1954 story. I don't know if you can find it going on any older than that, but um, you mean what is it, the, the, the fables, so old to the fables. It's, it's exactly the sort of thing he used to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Greek Absolutely right. Yeah, Aesop's yeah. fables. Aesop's 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Or... This one isn't in Aesop's fables, but I did look up some scorpion frog stories on mm. Wikipedia. Um, and actually, here we go. Wow. The image of a scorpion carried across a river by a frog occurs at an earlier period in the Babylonian Talmud. Well, it's in the Talmud. Um, where is it in the Talmud? It is... I think that's probably a miscitation. I shall go online later and correct that in <laughs> Bereshit Rubber. Um, though with a different outcome and purpose, right? Because the frog, the scorpion doesn't die. The scorpion crosses the river, stings a man, killing him. This is said to illustrate how God's will is filled in seemingly impossible ways. An Arab variant, this I thought was interesting, is found in a Sufi source that illustrates divine providence with the tale of a scorpion that crosses the Nile on a frog's back in order to save a sleeping drunkard from being bitten by a snake. In neither of the above, however, is the frog harmed. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I haven't had a chance to check that Sufi story. Um, and I also found for you delectation and amusement an 1847 illustration of the scorpion and the turtle from the Persian Kalila and Dimna an ancient fable might have inspired the scorpion in the front. I mean the in, the in the in the turtle and scorpion one the scorpion tries to sting the turtle and the turtle mm. says you idiot scorpion why are you trying to sting me don't you realise that we'll both drown um, it's much harder to sting a, a turtle and the turtle of course doesn't it, die it, because it, the turtle it, has a shell so um, we have now proved that, that, that A, scorpions are acting on um, divine shlichut, uh, and B, uh, frogs. And, that, that, you know, God's ability to kind of get the scorpion and the frog doing this stuff is really quite intense. I mean, you know, you get the scorpion waiting there, you know, schlepping it across, waiting, bringing it back. And I can't get a taxi to wait for me when I go to a funeral. Everything has, a Everything has a turn. Everything has a turn. Everything, right, good, exactly. Yeah, you're fitting into religious yeah. category of everything, you know, everything has, has purpose. Reason. And everything is on God. Everything is on God shlichut, right? It's not. It, it's slightly more. Yeah. It's almost. Um, Nothing it's happens almost, except by God's will. If exactly. Something bad happens. It's because I've done something wrong. Or right, right, right. Happens. It is a kind of a theodicy, right? It is mm-hmm. a kind of a justification of bad. It's yeah. also a cop out of the entire of the whole world because you blame everything on God. Mm. But right, I mean, yeah. that which may be blasphemous in itself, yes, right? Yes. You know, God's really responsible for this small baby dying. Well, that mm. makes God evil, right? Mm. So I mean, it, it doesn't save you from blasphemy. It just moves the. It yeah. moves the problem around a bit. Um, but, you know, you will be unsurprised to know that what will follow will be several other stories of 
seemingly unnecessary animals acting, you know, in theologically significant um, ways. Uh, Rabbi Pinchas B'Shem, Rabbi Hanan de Sipurin, uh, Rabbi Pinchas in the name of Rabbi Hanan from Sipuria, Amar Uvda Chave. I've got a story, right? Um, Berchad Gavar, da Chave Ka'em Lemechatsa Bahada Bikat Be Tarpa. This is all Aramaic. I didn't. I didn't bring you all the clips out of Jastro. I'm sorry. You just have to trust me. I, 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 I have prepared this properly. Um, if you want to check that I'm translating, ever doubt you? The Aramaic into proper Hebrew. The commentary below the line translates all the Aramaic into Hebrew. It's one of the reasons why I really like this um, uh, commentary. Uh, it translates the Aramaic into Hebrew. But the, um, uh, there was this Chad Gavar. Um, there was this guy. Um, Gibor, right, the Hebrew for hero, but uh, Gavar is a, is a person who was going along at harvest time in the fields of Bay Tarpa. Um, Chamachad Asev, he sees this grass, the Liket, Leket, it's a, a root term, Leket Ketsircha, the gleanings of your fields, right? So he sees this grass, he cuts it up. Uh, and he makes out of this grass a thing for his head, a kind of a crown or a wreath, maybe. Um, along comes this snake. So it bites him, but he kills it. So he, this guy's been bitten by a snake. Obviously, it's going to be a poisonous snake, but he's, he's, he's around enough to kill the snake. Wow, amazing. Atachad Gavar. Become le mis karba This other person comes along and he checks out the snake. Amar tame anea min de katel hadin chiva. I'm amazed that someone's managed to kill this snake, this dangerous snake. Amar hahu gavra ana kat lit yate. Anna, Ani, I killed it. Tala apui, the Hamalahahu Asva Vida Klila La Rosha. He lifted up the face and he sees this grass which has been made into a Kalila La Rosha, which has been made into a crown for his head. So this is the other guy who's come around. Amar. Min kushta at katila tiate? He said, uh, who, um, sorry, min kishta, where are we? Um, d did you really kill this snake? Amarle in, he said to him, yes. Amarle, yucholat marim hadain aspa min roshach? Can you marim romamu? Can you lift up? Can you take off? This thing that you've put on your head, this grass that you've put on your head, Amarle, in, sure I can. Kevanda arim yate, Amarle, at yechol kariv hacha, umarim hadim chiva bahadin chutra. Can you come close and lift up this snake with your with the stick chutra, right? Um, right. Chutra. Ikala chutra. <laughs> Right? Can you lift up the snake with this stick? Amarle, in! Yes, says the guy. Kevan de karav la hahu chiva, mianushru avarav. As soon as he comes close to this snake, all his limbs fall off. <laughs> um, so, um, there's a snake, it's coming, it tries to bite him but gets killed. Because the guy's managed to kind of put on this magic thing that stops him being right. killed by a snake. Then the other guy comes along and goes, hmm, this is interesting. This snake looks like it was here for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you think you just take the thing off your head? <laughs> he takes the thing and his whole body falls apart. I thought, you know, it's like those little um, things where you press the button at the top and the whole thing just goes like that. Um, the theology on this, I think, is kind of interesting. The snake is doing God's work, but man is capable of escaping God's work by doing what's essentially a piece of magic. 
Um, you know, you're not supposed to defend yourself from snakes. I don't know, you know, but it, 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 it doesn't really seem to be about our major purpose, which is showing the role of the snake, but really just a kind of, oh, I got another story about funky animals. <laughs> yes, I mean, they're all there for a purpose. <clears throat> and the purpose can't be defeated. Right, I mean, there's, 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 there's some stories like about the... Ha- sounds like something out of Harry Potter or something. Yeah, I mean, it's all, you know, it, it's all, it's, it feels like this sort of mythological, folkloric kind of world. Mm. The, um, uh, which, 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 of course, people like J.K. Rowling and um, uh, Game of Thrones, what's his name, George Martin. I think, you know, all these people, you know, and, and um, uh, Terry Pratchett, like, I mean, all these people, they know this kind of stuff, you know, and they're reading this kind of stuff and they and they'll use it and they'll play with it. Sometimes they'll adopt it. Sometimes they'll twist it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, can you escape God's desire to have you dead? Um, anyone seen Matter of Life and Death? One of my absolute favourite movies. Right? Oh, yeah. Hal Pressburger. Been. Right. I mean, you know, it's fantastic. I think there have been altars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was, was a long argument. time ago. Right. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's fantastic, fantastic movie. But, um, uh, there, there are some stories at the end of Moed Katan about the angel of death turning up oh, and yeah. rabbis being able to kind of, you know, distract the angel of death or persuade the angel of death to come back in a period of time or not letting the angel of death into the house. But the angel of death always wins. You know, ultimately there is no escape from mortal condition or no escaping God's... Um, this absolute belief in fate, Bashet. Whatever happened is happening. But then we have the Haggad Yah. I mean, it's uh, angel of death... He's, he defeats us, isn't he? Yeah, but only by God. Yeah. Only by God. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Rabbi Yane, Haya Yoshev Vidorash Bapetach Iro. So Rabbi Yane is sitting and drushing and midrushing or expounding at the gateway to the city. Ra'anachash, Martya. He sees a snake winding. Uva v'chava mardifle min hadin sitra. He comes towards it and chases after it and it goes to one side. Chave chazer midin sitra. Vod chave radafle um min hadin sitra. V'chave chazar min hadin sitra. And he goes one way and it goes the other way. He goes one way and he goes the other way. Sitra achra, you might have heard, right? The, the other side. That, you know, so, sitra. so he's kind of, he's trying to kind of get hold of this snake or chase the snake or something. And the snake is sort of moving away from him and adjusting and, and, and trying to escape him. Um, and eventually, Amar, and he, so he says to himself, This is going to do his, his messengership. Whose messengership? God. Right? Why can't he get hold of this snake? Why can't he catch this snake? How come this snake keeps being able to move to the one side and to the other side? God is sending this snake. Oh, he goes. The guy sitting at the Petach Iro. He's sitting at the opening of the gate, of the, of the city. They're not wanting to allow this snake into the city. Eventually he realises, you know what? This snake is on God's business. And he stands aside, lets the snake in. Miad immediately lets us. I mean, I, I think either the snake's coming out and it's Miyad, or he kind of, the snake goes in, and soon after, Naflai Chavrabair, out falls this cry from the city, Plony ben Plony Nashachot Nachash Vamet. So-and-so, the son of so-and-so, has been bitten by a snake, and mate, dead. Um, so this, this, this one is a proper story. This one properly fits in our Midrash. This is, you know, this snake, which is absolutely being sent to do uh, the Shlichot of God. It's a very passive view of human endeavour, isn't it? Yes, this? <laughs> you know, everything is for chef, you know. Tshuva, tshuva is late. I mean, tshuva definitely exists by this point. But, but the, the main biblical idea is that if you have done something wrong, you deserve to get punished for it. Like, the idea that you could do something wrong and escape any response is a karmic. Right, it's 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 unacceptably a breach of doctrines of of of, of why good things happen to good people, why bad things happen to bad people. So, I mean, it's a reconciliation for the unavoidable, but it doesn't mean that it counsels um, simply a laissez-faire philosophy. I mean, really, I, mean, well, I don't think it is laissez-faire. I mean, I and mean, you have to. I mean, I think the rabbis would certainly say that the guy that the snake is going to is is going to get 
has done something wrong, which is why God is sending the snake to get them. Self-evident, if you did stop the snake, it would not have been God's will that someone it bit someone to die. Yeah. So if you've been successful, that proves that it's not God's purpose. The fact that you haven't been able to catch it and stop it proves that God's it's gone God's purpose, so it's all okay. It's not my fault. Yeah, how can it's God. If, if somebody is seriously ill, you should try to save them. But if they die, then it's God's will. That's right. Well, I think I think what this seems... I mean, you know, bearing in mind where we began this Midrash, which was that verse from Ben Sirach, it was the previous Midrash, medicines are fine, but you see an animal sitting there. It's doing it's doing God's will, maybe. I mean, you know, I'm not sure that that's a theology I've ever kind of come across before, but that would be an acceptable reading of these two midrashim. You know, doctors, chemists, you do everything that they should that they can, but um, there is a purpose to scorpions and snakes, which is to kill, you know, to be on the shlichut of God. I think this stuff is fascinating. <laughs> Until the chemist finds the antidote. Until the chemist finds the antidote, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Rabbi Eliezer, Have Yatim Matab Beit Kise. This is one of my all time favorite <laughs> literature. Rabbi Eliezer is sitting. At, I love this. Matal of um, Yatev, Yatev, um, Taf is, is Aramaic for shin, so it'd be Yashav, right? Would be sitting. Matal, to, to go on a teal. A journey. Yeah. Right, he's going on a, he's sitting and journeying in the toilet, right? He's sitting on the toilet. But, you know, he's, he's, he's the kind of person who just... He it here is to ease himself. Ease himself. He's <laughs> material. I mean, like, he's just hanging out. Like, he's just like, you know, the kind of person who just likes a good, long, you know, forgive my French poo. You know, <laughs> here he is. He's in the bed, he say. Um, Atachad Romai. Along comes this Roman. The Tarche. And kicks him off the toilet. Deem yatev v'yatev le, and puts himself there and sits down himself. Right. So I, I think I think you do need to, um, in order to understand this, that he's kind of hanging out a bit too long. Right. The Roman. I don't know how much patience the Roman had, but certainly it's been used up. So he pulls the guy out of the toilet, plonks himself down to the toilet. Um, and and is anybody? Did anybody else know Roman uh, Yiddish curses? Roman Yiddish, yeah. <laughs> Roman Yiddish curses. Did anybody else know Yiddish curses about having that you'd curse Romans that they would they would get the the um, uh, diarrhea and have to sit on the toilets with scorpions coming out and biting them on the bottom? No. no? Oh boy, was it just my grandparents? There were all variations. There are there. Are. Right, I, mean, I, I tried to I tried to Google one. And I couldn't. I, I, the only the only quick Google of a Yiddish curse involving the toilet that I could find was. May you go to the toilet either every three minutes or every three months. <laughs> Particularly <laughs> vicious Yiddish curse. Uh, so lovely. But I definitely knew a Yiddish curse. I, um, I, I will try and find it for next week. I think I know where I can find it. Um, the, the, you know, may you may um, uh, 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 these things that come out and bite you in the to- in the in the tuchus. By the way, uh, sorry, I've given I've given the I've given the end of this away, but you can probably guess what's happening at this point. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Spot the story. Uh, right, spot the story. And this is part this is part of this is part of, I think, the fun. Part of the fun is that, you know, you start off with a kind of a really from verse, like Vayakula Hashemai and Bahaaretz. And they're like, Yeah, everything is Bakhlal Briotoshal Olam. Everything is necessary for the creation of the world. What even the Yatush, even the Ziv. Yes, because there was the time when the and by the way, the minute that you say to a Jew, maybe even to a Jew living in two thousand and seventeen in England, you know the thing where you're on the toilet and the Roman comes and kicks you off the toilet and our Kishkas go, Yes, we know that story. That is our story, that is our relationship with the Roman people, that is you know, and and, and in all our kind of our journey of Gullus and exile and everything else, like we we we, we are we are are bound in to kind of like resonate to these kinds of stories. Uh, on comes the Roman, and he says to himself, "This guy, let Dane Al Magan. This can't. This can't be for nothing. Uh, this can't just be happening without a particular cause." Miad nafak chad chiva umacha yetev katal yetev. So you know, immediately up comes this snake, bites him, and kills him. And so this guy has been kicked off the toilet. It says, Vakara love. And he says upon this, hmm, this verse from Isaiah. Let's just do this. Um, Eiten Adam Tachtecha. So have a, I've, given you the, um, I've given you the verse from, uh, from Isaiah. 
since thou art precious in the eyes of my uh, precious in my eyes and in my honor and I love you I will put a person in your place. Can you see where I am? No. They, um, I'm, I'm yeah, underneath. Yeah. I'm underneath yeah, the scorpion yeah. and the. Uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, since I love you. I mean, it's this is this is what's called second Isaiah, which, um, the kind of stuff that we use for um, the haftarot of the seven weeks of comfort after Tisha B'av, between Tisha B'av and and um, Rosh Hashanah. Since I love you and you're honourable in my eyes. I will love you and I will place a person in your place. Well, that seems to suggest that somebody else, you know, if there is punishment that needs to be delivered to the world, <clears throat> I will set it on somebody else. And it's actually, that is an, an extant theology that's kicking around. God's, got, God's a little angry and wants to punch someone. It's a bit like, like this is the justification for MMA or heavyweight boxing. Oh, you know, they've got to they gotta hit someone. Why don't, we, why don't we turn it into a kind of a regulated sport or something? But since, you know, I, 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 but, but the verse says, I will attend Adam Tachtecha. Sorry, but uh, aten Adam Tachtecha. I will now give my drush on this, but aten Edom Tachtecha. I won't put someone in your place. I will put Edom in your place. Who is Edom? The Romans. Right. 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 Since since I love you, Israel, I'll put the Roman in your place or Tachtecha. Underneath. I will Underneath. put the right on your phone like the bottom. <laughs> it's a bottom gag. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's you know, it is quite literally toilet humour. Um, and um, you know, God bless Gerald's happy. <laughs> I've never seen you so happy in the year since we started, Gerald. Um, I, I think I might have finally been, <laughs> been through your there your, your, a, your tortoise purpose, shell. Yeah, there was a purpose in midrash. You know, after all. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and and, and uh, you know, I, I, I do just love the way the midrash is capable of moving from one thing to another, and 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 there is the Odyssey, and there is you know the the nature of the Jewish journey, and there's all kinds of stuff which is being wound in and out of what is frankly a not bad toilet gag. I mean, here we we like to say Edom, which we mean Romans. But were Romans because they are always associated? Yeah, but were with they Jewish... actually were they mentioned as Romans anywhere? In, in other words, what I'm trying to say is, would the would the Roman authorities have thought on, themselves on, on, on as being Edomites? No, 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 no. But the biblical verses, the, 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 the biblical verse is Adam. The yeah. biblical verse is Adam. It's the biblical verse is a person. It's not yeah. an Edomite. It's not Edom. Yeah. So, you know, so it's a, it's a gag off the gag. Right. And, and, the, and the way that Midrash is designed to work, that the more that you are steeped into the rules of the game, the more that you kind of instinctively just sort of get it. Mm. And the less you sit there and go, well, it doesn't say Edom. Mm. And by the way, the Romans aren't Edomites anyway. You know, because you are, you, 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 you're, you're, it, it is successful as it succeeds. It, yeah. You know, once you're, if you are an insider into it, and then also, of course, you're then likely to be, you're then more likely to sort of buy the theology. You know, you're, oh, somebody's there suffering. Oh, you know, it must be that it's God's will or this, that or the other. Right. You know, the, 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 the sorts of things that in some ways you have to accept as a Jew leave, living under he, living under Roman dominance in the year 300, 400. There's no point you sort of sitting there going, you know, I shall rail against the fact that Jews are getting the sand kicked in their face by the Romans, well, you know, you may well rail against it. Bok Offa did, and that didn't get him or Akiva uh, anywhere successful either. So, you know, it, 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 it's it's both uh, gross and subtle and sophisticated and um, and um, playful. Rabbi Yitzchak Be'er Alazar Havekeyem Matayal Al Meshunita De Yamad Kisarin so Rabbi Elazar is going on a matayel, right? He's going on a teal. I mean, the teal does mean journey, yeah. teal, right? He's going on a teal on the um, on the beach by the Sea of Caesarea. Lucky man. Ra'ashem kulit achat. He sees a thigh bone. Have matzna la, and sneers. He covers it. He modestizes it, right? It could, you know, literally means covers. He says there's a bone there and he covers it up. But how about mit galgala? Galgalgalats and it rolls out. Huh. 
Matsnale, the Havet mit Galgala. He covers it up and it rolls out again. Ama Zot Mchunet la Asot Shlichuto. Shlichuta. And that is definitely Mchune, that is definitely ready to do God's Shlichut, right? He's tried to cover this bone up a couple of times, um, but it ain't working. Uh, did I say on the beach? I think it's the cliff tops. Mm. Sorry, it's necessary for it to be the cliff tops. Um, why, why, why might you want to cover up a, a, a big bone on a cliff top path? Someone could trip over it. Yeah, and what would happen if they were on a cliff top? Yeah, it might fall over the edge, oh, depending on which way they fell. Right, <laughs> guess which way he's going to fall. <laughs> 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 Along well, comes. That's to be, I mean, to this. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's, uh, that's how he knows it. Ava Chad Baldar. I gave you Baldar. Um, top of the, uh, the reverse page. A Baldar um, is a, a Greek word meaning a courier. A Roman courier. Um, Federal uh, Express. <laughs> well, no, it's the government. Mm-hmm. Like Commie's, Commie's doing King John, right? And who doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't like King John and tax collecting and yeah. all this kind of stuff, right? Along comes this um, Baldar Roman official, the Nich Shal Bar Venafal the mate, and he. And by the way, this all of a sudden is Hebrew. Do you recognise that word Nich Shal? It was actually in last week's parsha, Nich mm-hmm. Shal. Lotti ten mechshol, lifnaiva. Don't play so safe. Stumbling block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, mechshol is, uh, is to stumble. So he comes over and he stumbles and falls and dies. And I just think the switch to Hebrew is because that verse, Lotti ten mechshol lifnaiva, is just so. You now realise why he was trying to tidy the bone up in the first place. It's just, you know, let me do it in the Hebrew because it's easier to explain what's going on if I do it in the Hebrew. It's easier to get the resonance to the biblical verse. Right, he falls over and dies. Azal Pash Pashuna, he goes and he checks him, Ashkahune, and he finds on him to en kativ katavin bishan alihudeid ksari, and he finds on him a katav. A, a, a letter, yeah. a decree, bishin, a bad decree on the Udaid Kisarin, on the Jews of Caesarea. Interestingly enough, this is quite an early example of people being referred to as Jews. Um, you know, it's, it's, of course, anachronist to talk about Abraham as a Jew, right? Abraham as a Hebrew. Um, it's anachronistic to talk about Moses and the Bnei Yisrael as Jews. They were Israelites. But the, the, the you know at this point post the destruction of the second temple, yeah, it's it's you can talk about people as yeah. as Jews for indeed the rabbis are talking about themselves as Jews. And now for one of my all time favorite mid- uh, next week for one of my all time favorite midrashim. <laughs> next week, I'm gonna miss it. Yes, and not only are you gonna miss it, but the version in here is so much better than the version in the English. So you're going to have to <laughs> catch up. <laughs> so much better than the version here. That's a great Do they, I mean, that's quite common. They just suddenly just switch to Hebrew from the Arabic yeah, um, back, to, back to the English. Yes.